Hi, I'm Kirk Atkins, and I'm here to work with Elizabeth on this horse pirouette. She's a 24-year-old Hanoverian, has a variety of issues in her front feet, and we're going to try out the sneakers and see if we can give her a little relief. The bell grinder here, this is useful for all kinds of different things, you know, and shoeing regular shoes. But for grinding sneakers, this is the tool to be preferred. If you don't have that, you can do it quite handily with the four and a half inch uh, angle grinder. So all you need is a 24 grit disc, the soft disc and a backing pad. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the alternative to using uh, to using this belt grinder. The other tool that you're going to need, uh, a lot of people used to have these for cutting out pads, and that's a, and this is a saber saw or bayonet saw, handheld. Make sure it's an orbital one that cuts, sweeps the blade forward. And I use these special metal cutting, 10 teeth per inch combination blades. And then of course, the drill press, if you have a, a, it set up, but you could also do these by hand with a hand drill. First thing we do is just have to pick up and evaluate the bottom of the foot. See these depressions right here? These sometimes indicate that they're bruises. So I'm just, Adjusting this lateral side a little bit, yep. So we'll address that flare, not so much that it's a real problem, but that's a migration of the hoof wall away from the center of the load bearing of the foot. Very hard horse to trim and keep comfortable. <laughs> this is gonna be good. So I believe she takes a size four, let me get the shoe. And here's the four. We can use the clips or we can discard the clips. I kind of prefer them because I like to be able to keep the shoes more stable so they don't slide around and stuff. So I try to incorporate the clips whenever I can. In the situation where we have a horse that has really bad ring bone or some kind of laminitis, I'll, I, I designed them so we could turn them around backwards so we get a square toe egg bar. Nice. <laughs> Just like that. First thing we have to do is clean the plastic off the clips so that they're not gonna be so bulky. So once I get the plastic cleaned off, what I do is I just taper the clip edges uh -huh. on, the, on the grinder so that when you put them on there, then you have something that's a, a nicer edge. So now you get to do it. Just be careful when you're grinding. You don't want to thin the base, especially okay. right there, okay? All right, so I have to learn the feel of this. So, just look at it. So, yep. And then you turn it around and you do it like that. All right. Okay. Look often. So just as parallel to the belt as you can. Okay. There you go. Just kind of roll it back and forth, just taking the corners off. There you go. I mark the lateral side and I put a little mark on the yeah, inside here. Yeah, yeah, so that we know which shoe is for which foot. Right. Very important, remember? <laughs> and when you pull them off, you pull off and mark each shoe. Oh, okay. Because so you, re okay. you remember where they came off from. Yeah. Because these are likely to reset like for a year. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So you can see that just by cleaning off the clips, we almost have the fit where we want it. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna set the shoe back a little bit farther, mm -hmm. and then I will mark on the front uh, where the points of the clips are, okay? okay? We want the center of the frog to point to the center of the shoe, okay. okay? You can use your hoof knife, you can use notch nippers, you can use your rasp, it doesn't really matter. I have little notch nippers, I take a little pass there and I clean it up with the knife until I get it in the right spot. So since I've marked it, I have a pretty good idea where it needs to be. So I'll take a little notch of the hoof wall. It's just like fitting any other clip. Yep. The only problem is you can't burn these in. Right. They do really poorly in the fire. Right. <laughs> so look at and take about half of the hoof wall right. the thickness. Okay. Just that little half semicircle. Right okay, make sure that instead of doing it this way, you do it this way. Okay. You want to go up the side of the wall a bit. We have good support. See, it comes to the very bulb of the heels here. Right. So that's good support. We can take a little off or more if we want. Uh -huh. So I'm happy with the position of this. So now it's the shaping time. I'm gonna pull the foot forward to mark it. So I'm just uh, marking the outline of the heel. Okay. 
These silver markers are great because they're opaque. Yes. And they can be seen on this on the polyurethane. And so we'll go to the medial side. You can see I follow this all around. Yep. Mm -hmm. You just take off what you don't need. Yeah. You could leave it on too if you just we could actually truly just grind this down and round them up. I could maybe never pick up a hammer again. Like for shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> okay. So the nail holes have to be accurately set, obviously. The biggest error that most people make is they drill the nail holes too fine, okay? So we know that this is the area that's safe for nailing, right? Don't we? Oh, yeah. Okay. So now let's just put this thing here and we can look at the thickness of this nail, uh, of that hoof wall at that point, and then we transpose that to that point, okay? That's what the lines are for, because okay. now when you drill a hole, so they come out in the grooves. Right. And so I just naturally look at that, and then I come back, and I know that that's the outline of the foot, isn't it? Yeah. Okay? So now our nail holes are marked. And then I go to the other side, and we see that the nail nailing is a little bit finer. Right. So we can actually do a little bit finer nail set. So just use your eye. Well, you just, that's the horseshoeing part. Yeah. I, I get so many of the farriers, they go, well, where's your nail holes, man? Like, well, you make them. Yeah. Here's, here's the oddity of most farriers, you know, that have a certain amount of cranial petrification. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> cranial petrification. <laughs> it's from being bent over. <laughs> so, so, you hand them a, so you hand them a piece of bar stock and you say, make a horseshoe, and they're like, hey. okay. Yeah. And they take it over and they throw it in the forge and they heat it up and they bang on it and they put all the nail holes in, in like 10 steps. Yeah. Here it's like, okay, hand me the shoes, and they're like, where are the nail holes? Oh. <laughs> the other thing that's good is if you run into an issue where you have a hoof wall that's blown apart, mm -hmm. this entire shoe is an aluminum plate. So you can place the nail holes here, 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 oh. all the way back to here. You see, there's, no, there's an infinite number of places that you could place it. Right. And that's the important part that when I designed these shoes, I had to have the ability to place it, the nails exactly where I wanted them mm -hmm. every time. So the next thing I'm going to do is trim off a little bit of the heel so there's less to grind. Like with pads, you take off the excess and then yeah. grind it. We'll just cut this down. Obviously, if you cut them too close, you can't add it back. Yeah. So, so we always give ourselves That's a, a good farrier's mark. rule. Yeah. With foot and with shoes, anything. So now we're going to take it to the grinder, and I'll let you do some of this. I'll okay. show. I'll shape one side. I'll show you the kind of fit that I want. Generally, I'm tight to the line, mm -hmm. and then I'm loose to the line through the back heels, just like you would shape if you had a shoe on. Right. That's pretty satisfactory. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how we can rocker the toe. Okay. So horses that have problems, ring bone, etc. Right. Those kind of problems are really addressed with these shoes because you can reduce the concussion in that. But the tread gives to the way the horse travels. We have the toe studs here so that they could push off without blowing the toe up. Okay. Because as the horses get up on that toe, they put all of that PSI right there and the mm -hmm. plastic just goes away. Mm -hmm. So over the time when I was testing it, I wanted to reinforce the toe. And three toe studs of half inch give the right amount of give to toe wear. And it also helps set the brake over back. They will get there eventually, but on a horse that doesn't have really aggressive footing, you kind of have to help them out. Okay. So I'll do a little cut of the, uh, of the urethane. And I can carry it around the corner. Okay. So everybody remembers half round shoes, right? Yeah. Well, we can make this entire edge radius so that the horse, if it has ring bone right. and it needs to break over on the lateral side, you can do so.
you can see that we've now gave, given her a rocker toe. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that horse's leg is on that shoe and the shift the weight forward, it wants to come off. The last step is that we're, we're gonna just drill the nails. Okay. So the important part about it is, and the good part about it is, is that you can add pitch to the nails. So what I do is I just or I start the hole, then I'll pick up the shoe and add the pitch and just drill it all the rest of the way. That's all there is to it. Start it, pitch it. All horses have, on, on, a, on the hoof, there's more angle at the toe than there is at the quarters, isn't there? So at the toe, in order for you to get your nails to come out high enough, you have to pitch them in. Okay. And, and so if you don't do that and you're, drilling, and you're just driving it straight, your nails will come out really low. So you have to pitch it. And, and that's something that's absolutely necessary. I've never used one of these. Yeah, so. just go down. You see, and I just have a little starter hole. You see, I've taken the pressure off. Okay. Okay. Just hold it up where you want it, and then drill it. How do you, you just hold it down? Yeah, there you go. Okay, there we go. In, in case you lose your drill, or it breaks, or it dies, or something, and you need to get holes into your shoes, you could still put them in with your regular traditional farrier tools. A good sharp pritchel. The end needs to be sharp. It has to be flat on the bottom. All right, so this one's a little bit, a little bit rounded off. So I'm just going to flatten it up a wee bit. You have to pritchel it from the, from the uh, ground surface, which is different from the other one. So you don't have quite the accuracy. So you place it where you want it. You drive it into. Now you see it's contacted the aluminum. Yes. So now, my anvil doesn't have a hole there. So I'm just going to go off to the end of the anvil. This is the way the French pritchel all their shoes. Uh -huh. <laughs> we actually have a piece of aluminum driven out through the end of the, out through the shoe. You see, and there's your nail hole. Very easy. So okay. That, so now we'll just take the pritchel out. So there's your nail hole without having to drill it. And then nailing is nailing. Well, the thing is that once we put that rocker in, the toe that's up above is not, is not part of the equation anymore as far as the biomechanics. The shoe is the biomechanics. Well, this is the step that all sneakers need to have done is you need to drive the nail heads through the tread in contact with the metal. Okay. And I mean, that's just basic shoeing. Yep. Your nail heads need to be stopped solid down to the bottom. And that's it. Put your arm okay. on your leg and hold it like this. Okay. See, I'm steady. Yeah. If you're out here like that, just put it here and just walk right up the... And the other side. See how my arm yeah. dressed it down? Yep. Here? And... Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, I want to do it all day now. <laughs> okay. Got it. The next step is clinching. With the foot on the ground... You do your clip. See the clip's in? Yep. The trick on these things is to pull the nails down since we don't have a block. Mm -hmm. you, I just use that and I just okay. take a little bit. I like to use the gouge. It gives a nice, tight clinch. And so now, we'll just clinch it on. You can actually shape these shoes on the foot. See how that little edge that we've left there? Just finish that finish that edge back to the foot with the, with the rasp. So there's a certain amount of shaping you can do a fine tuning on the foot. So you can use the coarse side. Long night strokes. There you go. That's good. That good? Yep. So when you hit the anvil and you hear this ring, that means that there's vibration going on. So go ahead and hit the anvil, you'll feel it Okay. Feel that in your arm? Yeah, I okay. can feel it. You feel it in your wrist? <laughs> yeah, I do. I feel it in my wrist. So now, you can just hit that harder. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. It's so like, different, huh? Not, like, you can't feel nothing, anything. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. So that's what the horse feels on every footstep. There's not that metallic shock on the ground coming back up through his leg. It's just... Can I do it one more time? All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool.